All right, it is one o'clock, and we and we are oh wow over the sixty over the sixty person range sixty and counting fantastic stuff. Folks are filing in, uh, so I do feel pretty comfortable about moving forward. You are at the multiple award schedule industry partner vendor training. My name is Andy Kirkpatrick. I am I am joined by my co pilot. Uh, co-captain Tim Balzer, and we are here on behalf of the Mass PSHC Industry Engagement Team, and we are so happy that you're here, and very and thank you so much for being a part of the GSA mission and supporting the GSA mission. We greatly appreciate it. Hopefully, this will be um, a very educational and uh and uh, worthwhile experience um however even if it is and i know it's going to be because we've been doing this before and i uh, got some great reviews so even though this is going to be a lot of information today especially because there's going to be a lot of information today do not let this be the last time that we connect so we uh, I will have my contact information. I promise at the end of this, we'll also have um, a, a, an opportunity for you to ask questions uh, as well. This is, um, I do have a lot of information, not many slides, but a lot of information here to digest and to make sense of. So uh, if there are things that maybe you think you get the first time around, then maybe a day or two later you go, hey, wait a second, what was Andy talking about? Or you know, wh wh you know, when these act things actually come into play, sometimes the uh, definitions change. So I uh, absolutely want to make sure that I uh, open myself up. Uh, my name is Andy, again, Andy Kirkpatrick. It's Andrew Kirkpatrick at GSA, Andrew.Kirkpatrick at GSA.gov. Uh, again, we're going to make that available to you uh, for sure. Uh, before we leave here, but um, if all else fails, you have a connection at GSA. So, um, so there you go. So that's that's worth the price of a mission right there. So, again, uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's keep rolling. Here's some uh, important facts about this. Uh, you all are the experts at what you do and how you do it. You are running your businesses. The purpose of this, of, of GSA, to help you in this endeavor is to hopefully make you more competitive in the federal marketplace. But the one that has to drive that change is you. And so we can give you strategies. We can give you advice. We can give you um, uh, strategies to move forward. But this is not and I really want to underline this, especially contracting wise, this is never, ever, ever, ever going to be a substitute for contracting advice. Anything that is involved with the contract needs to go through that contracting officer. They are the ones with the signature on the paper. So they are the ones that are going to be able to not only give you the best advice, but the most valuable advice, because it's the advice that is tied to your contract. So. Um, so this is all well and good. And of course, with getting close to, and there is hundred participants in this, we are not going to be able to hit everybody singular contract in our short time together. So don't take this stuff, especially contract wise as gospel. These are merely suggestions. These are merely based on success stories in the past, things that we know have worked. However, it is, again, for educational and informational purposes only. And so um, make sure that you are, um, you're doing that. And if you have any questions, please submit those questions through the Zoom Q&A feature. And again, like I said, we will be able to have plenty of time to go through those. So, um, but I am solo right now, so I will not be able to kind of see the Q&As as they come. So please, if you're thinking about them, Put them in there, and then um, and then we can um, and then we can kind of kind of move from there. So, uh, here's the agenda for today. As you can read, uh, first starts with like kind of the overview, then uh, getting into what you're kind of what you can expect with the assessments, and of course the little plenty of mastering uh, contract mods, always always a big uh, always a big issue, and then uh, some of that structure strategy that I was talking about and of course resources 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 
one of the wonderful things that GSA does is they provide you with lots and lots and lots of resources. What's frustrating sometimes is that it's very difficult to target these these resources appropriately and also um, you got to realize that, especially with me, my particular group, uh, the Mass PSHC, I have about 7,000 vendors that I am responsible for. So it gets to be a little bit of a, of a challenge trying to manage and, um, uh, and make sure that, um, that I'm shepherding uh, folks as well as I can. So be patient with us and use the contact. Use the contact information that you get. So here's an overview on the mass uh, contract. Uh, your uh, you get the five year reward, five year award rather, and then three extra options if optioned. Of course, not a guaranteed. Uh, you sh you uh, in your package there are um, different levels that you need to uh, get to, and different things that you need to do to make sure that you can stay uh, eligible and stay uh, stay in the situation that you are um, in right now. And so um, more of the contract uh, overview, there are uh, 12 large categories, always, always, always very important to make sure that you are in the correct category. Uh, sometimes folks get in there and they think they're in one category and it really turns out they should be in other categories. This is where having a dialogue and a and a conversation with your contracting officer is essential. And so um, make sure that you're not only in your large categories, but really, really specifically making sure you're in those subcategories. And so um, at the end, I think the, the, the bottom bullet is absolutely the most essential one. This, this requires ongoing commitment. As I said before about the hey, this is a great this is a great opportunity. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of great information here. Don't let this be the last uh, the last time that uh, that you do these things. Make sure that you are training. Make sure that you are your um, approach to these things, your outreach, are consistent and constant. So quick uh, quick poll question. Um, you can put them in the. Uh, in, in the in the chat, I believe. I'm sorry, Tim. I completely I, I completely messed this up, didn't I? So, um, uh, running a poll real first, wait, real quick. What are some of the main factors that that influence that decision? What brings you here? What um what was what was the motivation besides money? Let's go with something else other than money. What what are the other factors here? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, here we go. Great, great, great. Game pass performance, access to opportunities. Fantastical. Just to learn? Great, Lynette. Band quiet, okay. I see some familiar names out there. Absolutely, fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Game pass performance, being able to service our government agencies and military. Absolutely, Tricia. That's one of those things that sometimes we lose track of, right? Um, at the end of the day, what the most important thing is, is that the government gets the best, most innovative, most efficient, most effective, and when I say effective, it doesn't just mean cost effective. I mean, effective, effective. Um, and so that they are able to gain the tools that will allow them to complete their mission. And so that's really what we are here to do is to make sure that we are um, competitive and that we are aware of what the issues are that drive these opportunities, that drive these RFIs, RFQs when they come out there. So what's behind it? And so... Um, we're in a very uh, unique situation, being professional services rather than uh, rather than kind of widgets or actual products. And so, when we're talking about services, uh, it is uh, very essential that we are um, it, it, acknowledging and um, and really uh, focused on what the driving force 
behind these RFIs and RFQs are. So they're asking for these things, but there's a reason why the Army or the Navy or the Air Force are asking for these things. And so it's really, really essential to you as a, as an industry partner to make sure that you're you're getting at the heart of that. So here are some of the requirements after getting on that mass contract. Two of these things that you should have done immediately at, up at the top, register and review that contractor startup. If you haven't done it immediately, like my mom used to say, immediately, if not sooner, uh, do it. Best time is always now. And so any of these things, make sure that you are um, being aware of and being cognizant of and that this is driving, excuse me, what you are trying to accomplish. And um, at the bottom, you can see those sales goals. That's one of those things uh, we were talked about the options before that make sure that you are um, are reaching and, uh, and and getting to so that you can you can get those options. Here's the uh, clause app applicability matrix. Always uh, always fun to say. And so uh, that's on the right side. This is eLibrary, which is basically a roster for all of the uh, uh, industry partners that GSA has uh, under contract. So it's a wonderful tool to be able to. To find out who the players are in the in the different fields that you are involved with, and so the, the applicability matrix really speaks to how the the mass clauses um, uh, fill in with, um, with with the FAR and and different regulations. Now, going into some keys uh, for success, this is the uh, contract compliance. A, a lots of <laughs> lots of things on here too. Uh, as I was kind of um, uh, alluding to before, I don't have many slides today, but I've got slides with lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff on them. So uh, make sure that you are uh, taking advantage of um, getting these things and make sure that you are having these things handy and that you can um, review them. So I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, and, uh, I guess the, the bottom right hand one is, is, is the one that, that we deal with the most here is make sure you're those mass mods. Um, we, we do shoot those out. The mass mods are, and we're going to have some slides on this, um, moving forward, but the mass mods are the ones that are initiated by GSA. And so, um, make sure that you are keeping up to date with that and make sure that you are, um, really keeping in contact with us. And so. Here's that contractor assessment that we were talking about before. Uh, we all, every single contractor goes through this, and so it's um, something that is um, it will happen eventually to you. Um, so make sure that you are um, really briefing yourself and making sure that the rest of the company knows about all of these different things um, that um, that you need to know uh, to access. So. There are the the uh, links at the bottom of it, the um, assessment reference guide, and also finding out who your um, your, your operations uh, agent is. So going into the mass mods, uh, I, again, like I said, those are the ones that are GSA initiated. There's the ones that, that kind of from the top and kind of push down, making sure that you're signing them within 90 days of getting them. And of course, depending on what kind of offerings that you have on your contract, that's going to affect what um, what you should be and must be doing with those um, with, with those mass mods. And um, it's also for you to remember that it's a prerequisite for uh, submitting a mod request, which comes from you. So you find yourself not in the right territory, not in the right category or the subcategory, and you want to modify your contract somehow, you have to make sure that you are up to date on the mass mods that GSA initiated before you can go out and really modify your contract. And so, as I said, here are the contractor initiation uh, modifications. This is always a, um, a, a, a challenging uh, uh, situation for us. If because it's uh, because each contract is their own little story, and each of our industry partners have uh, different stories that they are trying to tell to the marketplace. And so, um, in order to be able to get those services out uh, to our our agency partners, it's really really essential that our industry partners 
you have the ability and are positioned in the correct way in order to get them to get that message out there to get your services known to be competitive and so um here's some things there on down the left hand side um some logistical like the address changes or financial status making sure that you're notifying the co this is uh, so essential i can't um underline this enough have conversations with your CO, be in his contact with as much as you can with your CO. Uh, on a warning, COs are very underpaid, overworked. They have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of folks um, as well that they have to uh, answer to. So um, I could take this time to make sure, or make take this time to let you know, to make sure you are pleasantly persistent is what I try to tell folks. And so, it's very, very important that you um, develop as much of a cooperative, um, collaborative, and um, mutually respectful uh, relationship with your CO. Absolutely essential. And especially at the beginning of this, that's the best way to do it. Very difficult once that trust is is um, is breached. It's very difficult to to get it back there. So again, one of the best pieces of advice I can give to you is to be professional and be pleasantly persistent with your CO. And here's uh, where to look for the mass mods. Again, uh, gsa.gov is a wonderful resource uh, for things, but you gotta know where to look. And so um, hopefully um, that this is um, that you can get to the homepage and and see where um, where these things are and so um, you can see down at the bottom this is kind of a screenshot from a uh, from a specific uh, account and so it kind of goes over there and you can see at the bottom you know here's the um, here's some of them overdue some of them once completed some declined all that kind of good stuff so it has the whole gamut. Here's more on mastering those mods uh, on, down the left-hand side, uh, making sure that the, um, you know the GSA regularly updates that mass solicitation. Uh, it's, lit, it's refreshed in SAM. We also uh, host uh, refreshed webinars, reviewing all the changes, giving you the chance to ask some questions and get some clarification. And again, making sure that you accept that mass mod within 90 days, absolutely. And again, if you have any questions, going through the Zoom Q&A feature. And then um, moving forward, that strategic advancement for industry partners. Uh, this is under that managing my GSA contract that you can find on, on uh, gsa.gov. This kind of takes you through that market research, the marketing tools, and demand data. Once again, like I said at the beginning, you all are the experts on what you do. We are not here to tell you how to market your product, how to market um, exactly uh, what you do, but we're mar talking about marketing that mass contract. And so I know the, the two lanes um, do intersect at different parts and there is kind of difficult to separate it and we can give you advice generally on what has worked for specific people in specific areas, but this is really um, your initiative to take what you do well and what you've done well on the outside and, and really apply it to the federal government. And so there is a, there's a lot of sentiment out there that you have to completely change your game, completely change your approach to go into the federal government that's not necessarily true. Uh, if it's the same basic approach, again, there's a lot more regulations, a lot more hoops to jump through in the federal marketplace, but the basics remain the same. You have a customer who has a unique need and an opportunity for a solution. You provide the solution. And so when you're doing your market research, you're figuring out what organizations have that need that you can fill with your service. And the, the marketing tools are used to make sure that you are keeping up to date on what RFIs and RFQs are out there. 
So it's it's these are tools to do it, but you need to make sure that you have your message, you have your story set. So many times in, in what I do as a, as a program analyst for the PSHC uh, group, and I talk to industry folks like yourselves, it is really getting to make sure that you are not only being able to tell your story, but you are able to get the story from the government agencies. And so these marketing researching the uh, tools, the marketing tools, all these are designed to get you into that area, but it's absolutely, it will not benefit you completely until you actually compare this with um, an, an, an actual marketing way um, moving forward. So you have to have that message that to go along with this, the market research and the market tools. Here's some more suggestions on it. Obviously, make sure that your sales, marketing, accounting departments know what's going on. Attend those industry days. So many times, folks are um, are, are are trying to find ways into organizations. What is absolutely necessary is that each of these government agencies, like other organizations, it's no different. People like to do business with folks that they are comfortable with. That is the truth. So they need to be comfortable with your expertise. They need to be comfortable with your uh, with your history, with your past performance, with all these different things. Industry Days is a way of communicating that directly to them and, and having that human, natural, normal uh, connection on there. So connect with those small business offices. The Apex accelerators are uh, absolutely huge. Uh, on the flip side, making sure so this is something that does happen very often that customers do to uh, industry partners do to um, turnover or different things that happen, uh, they don't have a consistent POC. Or if they have a PS, uh, POC, it is maybe tied to a market or to a consulting person or somebody that's not part of the of your organization. So make sure that your POCs are up to date and make sure, make sure that it's easy for people to find you. Again, wonderful to have a great uh, marketing strategy. You use all these great marketing tools. You get in front of folks and you, and you do a great job of selling them on what your solution is and, and what all the wonderful things that you can do for that, um, for, for that uh, organization. It's not going to be much if they can't get a hold of you. So um, make sure that you have the, the POCs and all that is um, is in there. So uh, this this slide's a big a, a big hit. Uh, I'll uh, kind of go briefly over it, but we can uh, but we can also um, make sure that you uh, are able to um, uh, really help and um, and uh, get through this as well. Making sure that you, if you understand whether it's a mass sale or not. Um, and there's the different hoops that are um, that are assigned there. So this is kind of the no, yes, yes, no, um, all that. So I am not going to jump into this, but I am going to make sure you flag this for future reference and that you are able to um, really make sure that you are um, denoting uh, orders that should be mass orders. Absolutely. And here's the, uh, a slide on a capability statement. Kind of referencing what I was talking about before, and so uh, the cap capability statement should be your story, and it should be um, outlining your solution to common uh, issues or challenges that you have um, you 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 have helped with in the past. And so um, it's a good start, but make sure that you not only are able to tell your story, but you are able to. I uh, get the story from the from the agency out as well. So at the bottom, as you can see, the APEC accelerators, I kind of mentioned it uh, a couple of slides before. They're an awesome resource as well. And you can find, they're all regional, so you can find the, uh, the APEC accelerator through that link there. Well, more on researching the federal marketplace, uh, the, the, some free data tools. Again, so much information is out there for you. And I understand that somehow, uh, and sometimes this information can be overwhelming. 
Um, there can be too much. I know we, we try to give as much as humanly possible um, out to our folks. It doesn't necessarily all pertain to you, but go through all of these and see which one fits. Almost like going out trying to, to uh, buy a new suit or uh, um, some new clothes. Mate, you go out, try the clothes on, see if it fits. If, is it flattering? Is it your color? Uh, does it does it um, accentuate where you want it and cover up where you want it? Super. Um, if not, move on. Put it back on the rack. But go through these different uh, these different things and uh, these different data tools out there and make sure that you are up to date on on all of those. And again, again, cannot <laughs> cannot say this too many times. Uh, make sure your POCs are updated. Uh, the top one too. I always like to say that earlier because I know I know the 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 next slide is coming in there too. Not a consultant. POC should be a company employee. I understand consultants are very good, wonderful at, at what they do. They are um, essential to, uh, to getting a lot of folks on contracts, and we are deeply, deeply appreciative of that fact. However, if you have too much, uh, too many people in between. Uh, what you do and how you do it, it's going to be very difficult to um, make sure that they get a hold of you. So, um, and those are the, where to maintain information. Uh, it's uh, it does get frustrating sometimes. I know I'm I'm dealing with some things now uh, that we have some industry partners that uh, sometimes the changes um, aren't aren't being uh, are being kind of sent through the whole process as it were. So my cautionary tale there is be persistent. Don't just make the change and think it's going to happen. So make sure that you're going back into your uh, your listings, your information's out there and making sure that that is, uh, that is relevant. If it's not, make sure you're reaching out to the VSC, uh, the Vendor Support Center is absolutely the first uh, first place to go for that. All right. And lots of uh, great links on that as well. Uh, the Vendor Support Center, there it is right there. Uh, that's what I was referencing. That's um, that uh, the best, quickest way of getting there because now once you do that, once you register with the Vendor Support Center, you um, you talk to them, then that's going to be a, um, a record of you, of you um, bringing that up. So it's very, very essential that you begin with the Vendor Support Center. And that, uh, with 128, there you go. There was my 30 minutes. Uh, thank you so much for the time. My name is Andy Kirkpatrick. My email is Andrew Kirkpatrick. I did see that Tim put that in the uh, in the chat. And we all did that. Pastavia St. John, she's the one that usually does this. She is actually uh, in, in route um, out to a conference, which is why you have me today. Uh, sometimes Pastavia and I do it together. But um, Pastavia is... Um, the overarching PSHC engagement manager. So I am in the uh, specifically program analyst part. She's in the engagement part. And there, and then there's my team lead, Michael Palmer, and then Pastavia's uh, branch chief, uh, Anthony Tony Tomzak. So um, we are here to help. We're here to make sure that um, we are doing all that we can to make you as competitive as possible, but it's very essential that you meet us halfway. And so there's a lot that we can do to help, uh, but um, without a clear and concise and constant effort on your part, it's very, very difficult to get a, a, a foothold in the federal marketplace. Once you do, it's wonderful, but it, it, the, 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 the struggle is getting that foothold. And so um, hopefully it gave you some ideas about where to start on all that. I realized in 30 minutes, it's a lot to kind of sift through. So I really absolutely welcome you going through all those, uh, all those links in there, try out all the, the, the open data parts, make sure you keep in contact with um, your CO and you reach out to all the customer facing folks on GSA. So we are here uh, and we are more than willing and happy to help. So, Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be here and go over some some Q and A. But um, how, how um, 
whatever you would like to do. Um, that's fine. Let's go in there. Okay. Uh, are contracts um, listed on the e-library? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. If it's not, then there, that's a big, um, yeah. Uh, where do we sign up for mod change informational webinars? That's GSA. GSA.gov. And then go into training, into vendor training there. Uh, with Trisha and then Rich, if my services are a smaller part of the of the larger GSA contract suite of services, any tips on marketing myself as a subcontractor? Uh, it is not done on the GSA portal. I definitely I would reach out to uh, that's where eBot or eLibrary rather is is really an essential tool there, Rich, because then you're going to be able to find out who else is um, is playing in your playground, as it were, uh, metaphorically. Um, and is providing the same services that you provide. We do not do that. Very, 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 very essential. We cannot be involved with um, making that kind of subcontracting um, agreement or any of that. We can mere all we merely do is is produce the the venue or the lane for you to do so. So. I am a big fan of subcontracting. Um, it's a great way to get yourself known um, without doing that, um, you know, without without having to um, ask a an industry to kind of put their eggs all in your basket, so to speak. Um, and so um, uh, that was, um, yeah, so that's the, that, that's the best way there is just to get, get out to eLibrary, figure out who else is doing it. They call them up and see um, if there is a specific niche or area of that 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 you can that you can help out with. Is there an actual guide for the streamlined process? I don't know what you mean, Sarah. Um, you need some more. Which streamlined pro for them for the the that the mass is the streamlined process? You can. There's more information on the mass there, um, but. Um, Hmm. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, there's a great friend. What, Lynette? You're very, uh, Lynette, that, that looks very, from that name sounds, rings very, very familiar to me. Um, just want to thank you for this great information. Thank you. Uh, Graham, my, uh, my question is any tips in regard to what might be different working with the federal government versus commercial? Uh, regulations. And I'll tell you, Sylvia, the size of the uh, of the federal government, uh, even the the different agencies, you're dealing with different bases. Um, there's a lot more. Um, it, it's a lot more spread out. So you're you're in the federal government. You might have a contracting office that's based in San Antonio, but the actual work is done someplace else. Um, that's one of the different things. So make sure that you are. Um, really getting at the person who's making the decisions. And so sometimes what's brought up as the POC isn't really one that's making the decisions. That takes a lot of uh, kind of trial and error and kind of um, working through. Um, so that the, just the just the pure bureaucracy is the is um, is the is the difference between the federal government and the commercial. And it's it's federal government's just a much bigger. Generally speaking, uh, the federal government is just a much bigger vessel, so it's very difficult to introduce any kind of agility to it. So you really have to meet them not only halfway, but more than halfway, and make sure that you are going at it with their uh, with a solution in mind. Uh, start a phase of the first mass contract. Good luck to you, Sylvia. Good luck to you. Make sure you're um, um, uh, getting in touch with that CEO, and you are on the same page there. Um, and all that kind of good stuff. So best of luck to you. Um, again, Andrew Dr. Patrick at GSA, if you have any um, any follow-up on that. Would love to uh, love to be part of the journey. Uh, I think that's what I got. Yeah, Sarah. There are, Sarah, definitely there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of, um, uh, information out there or um, ways of explaining to other folks what the, what the streamlined process is. So I would say I would definitely, I, I would Google mass 
stream and mass process. And so that can kind of take you through it. So I don't know if there's an actual guide, but it is, um, there's definitely, um, there's definitely some PDFs and things of that nature kind of kind of show people what the streamline process is. I think that's what, I think that's what I got for you. Does that make any sense? And it doesn't, please um, read andrew.kirkpatrick at gsa.gov. You want to get more um, detailed with that. Happy to take that offline as well. Let's see, Tim, Tim, put that out there. Tim, thanks a million. Another seamless, uh, another uh, seamless uh, session here. Um, and that's all because of him. So, um, very, very appreciative. Let's see, let's go back to the Q&A. All right. All right. I'm still here. I'm still here and happy to be here. So I'll, uh, I will, I will stay until the last person, uh, until the last person leaves. Close, close it down as a And if somebody wants to, um, if Sylvia or Sarah or Rich wanted to ask a follow-up question, absolutely happy to do that too as well. Hey, hey, Jim. Okay, we obtained our contract two months ago. Thank you very much. Uh, we got no buyers for our services. Okay. Uh, Hmm. I responded to a contract offer from someone who said they searched the library for our service and, it, and we didn't come up. Uh, okay. Um, well, that's easy. You know, that's easily remedied. Just want, you know, make sure that it's up on e-library. Um, they could have been looking the wrong place. Um, it is possible that you're offering the wrong services or not marketing properly. Absolutely. That is uh, possible. I would make sure when you go into eLibrary and you do find your entry uh, that you also find the folks who you regularly compete with. So you make sure that you are in the right place. I don't think it's necessarily offering the wrong service. It's, it's offering, it's not being in the right place for folks to find you. Um, is, is, uh, sounds like what the issue is. Um, and again, if you're not getting any buyers and if you're not seeing anything that's really, that's, um, that reflects what you do or your strengths, make sure you're reaching out to that contracting officer and, and, and going through and, and modifying the contract so you can go to where fish, where the fish are, as my, one of my old sales people used to say. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, Sylvia, any suggestions about the cadence from which to contact? Um, they want to be contacted when they have a need and request. They, Sylvia, they are very, as I said, very, 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 very overworked and um, very stressed. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. When you have a need or a request um, or anything that's in, involved with the contract. And so, um, yeah. Make sure there is a reason behind it. And yeah, cadence is, is, you know, when you need them. Don't hesitate, but be appreciative of the fact that they do have a lot of, of other folks that they have to take care of. So be patient um, with a, you know, with a response. Uh, I forward to the side. So at least the tap of the Coral Trisha, thank you so much. Gem, are we under a single center press? Uh, okay. Um, I am not sure, Gem. I'd have to look at what your, you know, what the situation is. Um, re it is feasible, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Um, snakes or or sins, absolutely. Um, that would be a, a contract mod. So, um, I would the first thing there. Um. I would reach out to the contract officer and they can review that contract to see whether a mod is the best uh, move forward for you. That would be my advice. Okay. 
Do we have to wait 12 minutes afterward? Uh, that's a good question, Sylvia. That's a question for the contracting officer. Absolutely. Anything anything dealing with a contract? Yeah, I I I apologize. But um yeah, absolutely. Whenever whenever there's anything talking about a mod or any of that stuff, then that's your signal to go talk to your CO. Uh okay, cool. David, I'm looking to add a new sin and new LCAT to my schedule. My company's my can work be done by JB to justify LCAT rates. David, that's a that's a contracting that's a contracting question, my good buddy. That's um contracting officer on that. And thank you for being here. Tim, thanks a million, buddy. Appreciate it. Great work. Lots of fun as always to work with you. And thanks for guiding me through this. Appreciate it.